What is up? <clears throat> Clear my throat. What is up, everybody? I believe that we are live. Here we are. We are live on the YouTube machine, YouTubing, doing YouTube things. This is my weekly uh, charting spree that I go on. These are all requests from my paid subscribers to the newsletter. And you guys are savages, man. We have a lot of requests today. Uh, please let me know that uh, you can hear me that I'm live, that uh, life is good in your part of the world. I'm going to give it a couple minutes to let a few people get in here, make sure that we're functioning. But yeah, I, I can hear myself, so I know that it's working, which is awesome. Uh, busy day, busy day. As I tweeted uh, earlier, some days my ADD starts to get a bit, a bit the best of me. Um, and you'll notice that today I'm drinking a coffee that's this big. See that? This is how I uh, cure my ADD. So uh, this this uh, this live stream is sponsored by Cold, Cold Brew Coffee, uh, proud sponsors of me. Uh, when your ADD is showing, drink coffee and get going. When you've got bad ADHD, don't drink one, just drink three. You guys didn't know that I was going to be a rapper one day, right? But I just wrote... Probably like that was probably like seven million dollars worth of effort from an advertising agency right there. I basically crushed it, um, which is awesome. So uh, I'm going to let a few more people get up in here and uh, then I'm going to go because you guys asked for like 20 charts or something. That's a lot. And we know that uh, start losing steam by the end. But I, I look at this many charts every day anyways, probably just, you know, for fun randomly. So making sure our stream is good to go. And it seems we are all good. What's up, everybody? Thank you for saying hi. I see a bunch of you uh, commenting over there. Always nice to interact with you guys. Some random comments. Venezuela present. What's up? India in the house. It's really awesome, man, to see uh, people from all over the world that tune into these things. The internet is crazy. And uh, the crypto space is even crazier, right? Because we interact with people all over the world every single day, all with a common interest, you know? Um, and that's definitely something that when I was growing up uh, was not the case. You know, it was very insular in the 1980s when I was a kid. You had like your local community. And if you had a friend somewhere else that you met, you had to like write them a letter. What's up, France? People are already talking about my fibs. Show me your fibs. I'm going to show you guys a lot of fibs today, probably. What's up, Belgium? So Essex, UK. People all over the place, man. I'm sure you're on delay. So I'm coming in a little, little behind. But, uh, you know. Make sure we got the tweets out, I'm ready to go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead now. We got some people in here. I'm gonna jump in and start. You can see across my tabs, across the top, that we're, what we're gonna be looking at, it was in my tweet. And also it's in the uh, description. Oh, one more thing that I need to mention. A, as you can see on the screen, uh, you know, the newsletter. It's been amazing. I moved to a daily format. Uh, the feedback has been incredible. So now I send it out every single Monday through Friday. And you wonder why my ADHD is bad. First thing I do every day, last thing I do at night, besides, of course, like, you know, go to sleep or kiss my wife or my kids or whatever. But, um, you know, it's something that I'm always working on, very proud of. And, uh, you know, I hope that people get tremendous value out of it. You can join that. Uh, there's a link below in the description. Also, this is sponsored by Femex, who also sponsors the newsletter. That is where I trade with leverage. They also have no fee spot trading, which is pretty cool. And they're offering up to 600 million, no, $600 uh, deposit bonus, depending on how much you deposit. So if you're a real Chad, you might get that full 600. Michael Saylor would get the full 600 if he deposited on Femex. Can we talk about that dude, by the way? Holy shit. Michael Saylor. Because it wasn't enough that he bought a half a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin a couple months ago with his company and 250 million, his own money, excuse me, 500 million and 250 million. Now he wants to buy another basically half billion and he's going to do it by offering unsecured low interest notes on MicroStrategy 
effectively transforming MicroStrategy from being a data company into being a straight up way to invest in Bitcoin, like an ETF. The dude has balls the size of New York City. It's unbelievable what he's doing. Is it risky? I don't know. Probably. He doesn't seem to think so. And, and, and I have to say, just for like uh, ringing in some clout, he actually DM'd me personally that information today and asked me to share it, which is fucking awesome. So like I talked to Michael Saylor, this guy's fucking great. Um, so yeah, but anyways, let's dig into the charts. Ready? Here we go. First one, let me make sure I've got this correct. And the whole list again is in the description as is that Femex link. I'll go. So by the way, super huge fucking bummer um, that Binance is actually finally coming after Americans. I don't know about coming after, but definitely uh, removing us, which sucks. Um, you know, like there was all the 2019 Americans can't trade here. Eh, maybe they never did anything about it. Now, including myself getting the 14 days to get your money off or else uh, letter. So even I was forced to either transfer things to wallets, sell some things, whatever. And now, you know, trading Bitcoin pairs for an American is very difficult. We have limited coins. So, you know, all coin trading has fundamentally somewhat changed, I think, for, for most Americans. I wonder if Sailor has to walk around with a wheelbarrow to, wheelbarrow to carry his massive balls around. Well, I think when we uh, entered, that was a comment. Um, and I think when I interviewed him, he said he had six yachts. So I think he just straddles between the two yachts and leaves one ball on each boat. That's what I would do. All right. A uh, reminder that when we look at these charts, lines are more like areas. You should never get caught up in the idea of hitting an order exactly on a perfect line. You're just never going to do it, right? Um, and yes, I am already signed up for Binance.us for those who are asking. Um, and uh, so lines are more like zones. And uh, also, I leave all my old lines on the chart so you can see how bad my analysis was in the past or good. Sometimes it's good. I, I have, you know, a talent for drawing things on pictures and stuff. Doesn't mean that they actually work. I would say that nothing here has changed with algo though. Honestly, like this is a less convincing breakout than it once was because we've just leaked out sideways, which kind of tends to happen sometimes. I mean, alts kind of look doo doo brown at the moment. You know, if we really want to zoom back, I haven't even like really zoomed out on this. So let's look at the weekly. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Okay, I'm actually do it like that. Oh, that's the wrong button. I'm gonna do it like this. Look at this area that was like basically the macro support for Algo this entire run, right? It kind of coincides with that line I had that was from right there, but you know, something like this, we we'll call that resistance. That's like basically the whole chart right there, right? Below that, you're still ranging, waiting for it to break out, waiting for it to do something above that you can be pretty sure that you've flipped the most key former support that's now resistance on the chart back to support. Coffee, go Gators. Hmm. Right? So um, there you are on the, on the uh, weekly. Go into the daily. I don't know if that'll be there, but uh, you, know, you get the idea that it was kind of in this area right here. So I think you want to get above that before you really start trading this because nothing else is convincing. We had this pop. I mean, this went from 14.4 to 22. I mean, it's a big move, right? That's almost, you know, a 50% move. It was like a 45% move or something on this bullish divergence. But that's really no longer a factor here. And we haven't seen anything else. So I would say generally above this line is fine. We're just kind of ranging here. You know, if you were going to, if you wanted to pull a range on it, this is how you would do it, just so you guys know. Drop down to this low, pull across, and then kind of to the first high right there, right? So you say, well, you could have pulled it down here, but I view this as a deviation because this was the clear bottom before we had significant bounce. So this is just a move below. So kind of you can even view it as like you don't want to trade it till you're above this and you would you know, even this deviation maybe sell down here, but you know, I don't, I don't think that's going to be a problem for now. 
Um, and we have all these wicks above the range. And yet again, I mean, listen, I know it's harping the same points over and over and over and over again and the same charts, but like, here's the EQ of the chart uh, of this ch channel, right? Look at how perfect that is. Support, you know, resistance, resistance, break, support, 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 break, resistance, support, and then ultimately here. So like if you're really scalping it, you might want to wait till you're back above the EQ, that dash line, which is the 50% of the of any channel. And then your target would only be the top of the channel. So it's a small move, but you can make a butt ass load of money just scalping a couple percent moves if uh, you're good at it and you have good risk management. But ultimately when I'm looking at Algo, I would just zoom out like crazy, right? And wait till you're, I mean, you can make it a line here, you know, like at the top above that, but wait till you're above this range and then it's sky's the limit, right? All right, so on to the next chart. Sorry, I'm just reading some, uh, some more comments. Michigan, whoop, whoop, there it is. Uh, hello from posterity. Hmm. We love posterity. I don't know what the hell I drew on this chart. Look at this shit. It looks like the Starship Enterprise or something. But uh, it was right, you know, um, which is nice. This shit wasn't, but I bet if we pull it, it'll become significant. Da -da -da. How cool is that? Shit. Sometimes I impress my own self. Um, RSI is doing a little kind of funky head and shoulders there, but I'm not going to worry about that. Let's pull that. <clears throat> so that's a cool line, right? Support, 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 break, resistance, resistance. The cool thing, the thing about that line though is like, who cares? Price could just follow it up, break. I just broke above it. And you know, the, if the, if the resistance is ascending, price can kind of resent, ascend behind it. Show me your fibs. Um, so let's see what we got here. I mean, this is starting to kind of, Look, parabolic, isn't it? I lost my mouse. Disconnected. Where are you? Having mouse issues? Hey, guys, my new computer that I know you guys are so horny for finally shipped. So I'm going to have that, like, in the next coming days. And then it'll take me seven years to unbox it and learn how to use it, obviously. But now I can be one of those, like, nerds who talks about my CPU and my memory and like my dust covers and my video card, I'd probably start gaming. Do they have a duck hunt on that shit? Hogan's Alley, anybody remember these games? Anyone? Uh, someone just asked if Femex now does spot with no fee. For, it's, with, it's a subscription with no fee. Is it better than Voyager? They're different. Um, Voyager is where I trade spot because I gain crazy interest while I'm trading or while I'm sitting on the sidelines, it's fucking incredible. It's incredible. And so like, if you're sitting on the sidelines, you can be in USDC or USDT gaining 8.59%. And then when you buy Bitcoin, you're gaining, you know, five and a half, six percent on that. You go back. It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. So that's your answer. Memories. Your name is memories. Memories. Or wasn't it that David Guetta, Kit Cuddy song? After all the memories. Uh, uh, yeah, that shit. Um, yeah, so let's look at this chart. I would say that this is now your kind of support. Here would be a line-ish. And I mean, this is bullish, right? There's nothing bad happening. Round, round here, round here between Normandy and Weston. Call this a little 20 twin twin. Anybody know what movie that's a quote from? The answer is Friday. If you are my generation, you probably do that. Um, so I would say that we're targeting this area, right? And this is a very clean breakout. A lot of, uh, you know, this line is kind of a meme at this point. I don't think it's going to be a problem. But like if I was trying to trade it now, I would try to catch a dip back to this was never kind of retested i mean you could even if you want to get really anal about it you could draw a little one here right but either here or here if you get a dip and then expect further movement up um this does have an increase in volume here it's not huge but 
you know, you did see it kind of flat while it was sideways and then volume going up. Now we're kind of seeing it come down. I mean, if you zoom way in, you know, this looks like some sort of like pennant vibe. I don't trade 30 minute charts, by the way. I'm just doing this for fun to show, to show you guys and hang out. I also have forget that I have like 90 more charts to do something like that. Right. But remember these pennants often break down. We saw it on Bitcoin just today and become flags. So like buying the support of a pennant is generally a garbage trade. Like Oscar the Grouch levels of trash. I love trash. Anything dirty. If you have kids or ever watch Sesame Street, you definitely know that joint. I make a good hip hop remix. All right. So that's what I'm looking at here. I would say that we're generally bullish. Um, so, you know, this looks like a sort of dips are for buying kind of, kind of situation. Right. Well, at least Ryan Simmons knew it was from Friday. I don't know if he knew before I said it, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Band. I haven't looked at this in a long time. Wow. Look at that. Non did look at that failed inverse head and shoulders. What a stupid idea. Who had that? Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to delete everything from this chart. And then I'm going to go down to my settings. Actually, I'm going to just right click it. Color theme, I made it gray. Because I don't want to look at those dark charts. I don't think they translate every way. So if value is Friday after next. I'll buy that. I'll buy that for a dollar. Speaking of movie quotes, who knows that one? I will give a high five to the person who can tell me what movie I'll buy that for a dollar comes from. It's really easy, by the way. I mean, that's, you got to know that one, right? Playing with my money. It's like playing with my emotions. It's from Friday. Somebody just typed that. What's up, big perm? I mean, big worm. I just quote movies while I'm drawing charts to entertain. It's probably not that entertaining for some of you. But my show, so eat shit. Um, can we call this a show? Is a live stream a show? Like, do I have a show now? Would you say? Um, so I would say that right now, this is your support, right? So if you're trading band, you know, bounces off this are fine, stop loss kind of rising. Um, I would say, let me go out to the weekly. I mean, it's not the most bullish pattern, <laughs> right? Uh, it could be acu it could accumulating and, and heading back up. Right now, though, you got to be careful. There's a pretty significant drop. And, you know, this could just be uh, sort of going sideways before another drop. And, I mean, to be frank, you could draw this as, I wouldn't say a bear flag, but like an ascending wedge, you know, coming down and then <clears throat> drop down below. So I don't see a reason necessarily to be like jumping all over this chart at the moment. Um, hey, if you type hot USD a few more times, maybe I'll notice it. You only did it three times in a row. Get it? it one more time. No, I'm not going not gonna to do that. Nope. Okay. Sorry. I look at your comments over here. That's why I'm always looking this way like this. I need to get more screens, I guess, up here, like I have back there. <clears throat> I mean, band just doesn't look that awesome to me here. I'm sure it'll go up. It tends to. Um, and it's even hard, I think, lost my mouse again, going left hand. Uh, it's even hard, I think, to kind of draw the, any sort of like definitive downtrending line, like you would want to draw it there. But does that look so convincing to you? And here, maybe, and then we're getting a retest. Okay, but none of that, like, none of that really fits for me. Do you hold FTT long term? No, I don't. I do not. Don't have any of that. Um, I'm just really not seeing anything particular here. Maybe you could also look at it like this. Who else uh, thinks of Juicy J when they see this asset? Literally every time I see this chart, I'm like, bands and make her dance. Bands and make her dance. I won't say the rest of the words because they're very dirty and there might be children watching. <clears throat> Unless they're strippers' children and they can watch because they hear that stuff at home. 
Um, so yeah, I would say, you know, we're in, in the top of the range, which is generally good and you want to see a break above. So you could trade it sort of like this, you know, something like that. But, but for the moment, um, bands make good. Day. Uh, I would say that there's, you know, this is kind of a watch and wait situation. You know, you could also, if you want to get really like kind of local about it, if you think that this is going to move up now because of that candle, you could draw the range like this, right? That's actually really nice because look at that support at the bottom. We're sitting on support at the middle. So either way, I would wait until there's a clean uh, close above this and try to catch a retest at the top of that on the way out. And if you are going to take a position on it, either this line, uh, stop below or above below this range, maybe below the range because we've seen it fake out below there already. So that would be pretty likely. What's going on with INJ guys? Somebody just typed and the answer is it's been going up a lot. Um, I was lucky enough to be in the pre-sale of that, but super tiny because it was so popular. I was literally allowed to like give like $2,000 or something, basically nothing. <clears throat> So here we go. Next, CRV. Haven't looked at this in a while either. More dumb old lines. That's kind of interesting though. It sort of is at support, but this is all dumb. I'm going to go ahead and just delete that. I don't like it, even though it happens to play nicely into my little bias here. Let's see. I don't like any of these lines. I like that line. This line's fine, but it's like, meh. I don't know. Maybe, you know, I always mention, but you should be drawing your line. And we had this nice move uh, on that bull div was great. Uh, and we caught that, you know, um, which was good. Let me see. There might be one kind of developing here. Let me see. Yeah, we have a potential bullish divergence here. Right from here, there's the close. This closed below. So this would be a bullish, technically a bullish divergence, which is kind of a nice thing right here. All right. Mm. From this candle down to here, slight, but it counts. So that's worth watching, I would say, on this, uh, on this one. I'll delete that now. <clears throat> it's irrelevant. Uh, and we're also sitting on support here. I could definitely see taking a position on CRV here. Right. I mean, it's risky, but that's a higher low. And there's a potential higher low. If it goes up from here, you can raise your stop loss as this rises, which is something I really, really like. Um, yeah. I mean, it's on support with a potential bull div, but look, this counts as a bull div, but if this closes without this like definitive elbow, if it like kind of leaks down here, eh, maybe not. So this is potential to be clear. This candle has not closed and has four hours and 35 minutes left. So a lot can happen. Damn. Someone just told me Ice Cube is watching. I got to step my game up. Straight out of Compton, a crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube from a game called With Attitude. You guys know that one? Another one. I'm stuck in the 90s, if you guys didn't realize that. So this isn't a very convincing bull div. I would say it's potential, but I really want to see like a bigger move above. Um, I would expect there to be some resistance here too. Right? So that's like from 416, but we're at 336. If we get from 336, even just back up to 416, that's a big move. A lot of money to be made there. So listen, none of these like look compelling to me. Like I'm not looking to trade any of this shit, but if you are, this is how you could look at it. I mean, this is on support. There is a potential bull div and you know, you got a chance. So it's up to you. I mean, there's definitely some kind of line here. If you want to be really honest, you would say that it's here because look at all those candle closes on it. That's absurd. Um, right. And it pulls all the way back to this one too. And we're below it. So maybe actually you wait till it breaks above 343 again and use that as support for a retest and head up. So something like this, you know, catch that little thing. Man, these lines do not like, I, I pull it all the way down, just doesn't translate. All right, so that's CRV. 
Someone just said, damn, you half chartist, half entertainer. Um, actually, it's half man, half amazing. Like Nas. Half man, half amazing. Nas is like, was my joint. I used to, I probably have it back here. So Nas is like, I used to like have it, like I had like four copies of it, but I would beat juggle it. I wore them out. So I had to get like an extra copy. But it was like the best beat to pull back on both turntables. Like, you know, the, the whole DJ thing. Wiki, wiki, wiki. You could pull it back and forth. It was fresh. Um, and he was half man. The, he said half man, half amazing in that track. Draft Kings, bad day on what looked like it was going to absolutely break out. I love Draft Kings, by the way. Um, funny story, true story. Uh, I play a lot of, uh, or this year I didn't really play much except for with friends, but I used to play a lot of daily fantasy football. And last year or two, now it's two years ago, I think, I won a pretty big tournament there. Um because uh, and like the Kenny Stills was on the Dolphins, so it had to be two years ago. And like at the very end of the second half, Kenny Stills caught two bomb touchdowns and won this tournament for me. It was like an afternoon slate. Um, so I tweeted at him and I sent him like a bunch of champagne. It's cool because he made me a bunch of money. That's how you treat someone who makes you a lot of money, even if they're a professional athlete. You send them shit, right? Pay that man his money. Another movie quote, but in the proper voice. Pay that man his money. I know y'all know that one. Who knows that one? So this would be my general view. Matt Damon. Um, this would be right here. Uh, yeah, someone said, I remember those bombs at sick. Yeah, it was like the best day of Kenny Stills' life. But what was crazy is because it was like, it was going into the afternoon of the tournament and I was like definitely in the top 20 or 30. And uh, then all of a sudden, it, Kenny Stills just busted on people, just spraying them all over the place. So I would say DraftKings is in this channel. We have this sort of resistance, which you can see was drawn not quite right. And was rejected there today. So maybe a break of this, anything above the mid of the channel, which is also the 50 MA on the daily. You see that a lot, by the way. You see like where an, uh, an MA lines up with a key level of resistance or support. You can see that even if you like eliminated the channel, this would be a support you would draw, right? Um, so I would say you want to see a break here. I mean, this does have kind of some head and shoulders properties of a top and I, I don't love this, but uh, I, I think there's a great business. They're just going to do well. I would see DraftKings sort of as an investment and not something to trade. So maybe I would dollar cost average into DraftKings. Rounders, you guys got it. That's a fucking great movie. But can we talk about the fact that John Malkovich is terrible at acting as a Russian? And he keeps getting cast as a Russian. Like that's the worst Russian accent in that movie. And then whoever like, you know, was casting the movie Billions was like, you know, we got to get to be this Russian gangster, John Malkovich, because his Russian was so good in rounders. Pay that man his money. He beat me. Straight up. He beat me. Okay. So DraftKings, that's the deal. e <clears throat> Probably my pick of the pick of the month right now, I would say. But you know that I have a general hard on for Elrond uh, because, as newsletter subscribers know, we went from about fifteen to thirty sats before it became e gold on Elrond in the newsletter, which is awesome because that like made my year. Everything else on top of that was uh was was just icing on the cake, and you can trade this on. Uh, on Binance.us, which is awesome. So I didn't get penetrated by Binance's shutdown in this case. You can still trade this coin. Uh, they also had some big news today. Um, uh, ORN, they did, a, they did a deal. I think ORN's providing their liquidity. Uh, Orion, which I know a lot of people here are really big on because it didn't happen today, but like 90 people generally request it. So we had this huge macro breakout. We have yet, since last time we looked at this, we have another higher high, another higher low. And this will 
inevitably be another higher high, which would be confirmed by what? Another higher low, right? So this higher high is confirmed by this higher low. This higher low is now confirmed by this higher high. So this becomes a question mark basically until we see another higher low. But you can see that this is extremely bullish. We just want to be above, you don't want to trade this unless it's above 792 now. Or, you know, take it down to like 574. That would technically, depending on how you look at it, you could also eliminate these, by the way, right? And then take any low that's above, you know, 474. So like even a retest down to here, if I would love to buy this down here at this red line if it happened and then continue up. And actually, I intend to have Benjamin Minshew, the CEO of... Uh, Elrond, I, I had him on the podcast ages and ages ago, and it was one of my most popular episodes. People are really passionate about this project. So I asked him this week if he would come on a, a live stream with me. And he said, yes. So we're going to get that scheduled, which should be really awesome. Um, sorry, looking at a couple comments over here, trying to catch up, but it doesn't happen. All right. So I would say right now, listen, you either want to catch it a little bit lower or you want that clean break here of 792 and then trade it on the retest. So, I mean, do I need to draw it really? Right. Bam. As Pomp says, bang, bang. Bang, bang. EWT. You know, it's a bad look when you open a chart with a whole lot of lines on it, but you don't see price. Right. It happens all the time when I look at something from like 2017 or 18, and then you generally have to do this. Maybe it's above though. Oh, so um, at some point we were drawing lines. Oh, those lines are all fucked up. This chart got messed up somehow because I don't know what the. Oh no, there is actually price action. Oh, this is an hourly chart. No shit. So somebody asked me to chart this when it was probably here and now it's here. What happened to you? What happened to that boy? Do you guys know that song? What happened to that boy? I can't even make the sound of the mic. I don't want to wake my kid up. Mr. Ed. Um, this looks like shit. Like, uh, looks absolutely dead. Like, you can't even get below the, it's still like right at the all time low where it hit the exchange, which is somewhat irrelevant. Um, yeah, if you're like holding this from up here, you are definitely a passionate community member now. I talked about this with Rand Nooner yesterday. Nooner. Uh, he had me on his, his show and he was saying how he has a bad habit of FOMOing into things. And then, you know, he buys it as a trade and slowly it becomes an investment. And then he slowly becomes a community member. Like all of a sudden you're in it for the tech when you didn't know even what it did when you bought it. But when it's down 90%, you start to research it and think, try to justify reasons in your mind why, why you should hold that piece of shit coin. Um, right now, this looks like that piece of shit coin, but th there's always hope. So always hope. I'm a very passionate community member of the Energy Web Token. My passion for it is passionate. First of all, this is just stupid. Like, look at these wicks. Literally, every time someone tries to buy this, someone's waiting here selling. So, probably Qcoin. I'm going to be honest. It's probably them. Right? Isn't yeah, Centivate on Qcoin? Um, yeah, you know. Um, you know that I have an advisor to Centivate, um, which we'll get to later. And the minute they put it on Qcoin, we saw this exact same thing. Because part of your deal when you get listed on an exchange is that you have to give them a shitload of your tokens. And when it's a bullshit exchange like this, what do they do? They sell all of your tokens and destroy your price. Cool. Community. I'm a huge community member of this community. So I would say I'm not going to go ahead and make accusations because I don't know anything, but Qcoin is doing this shit. Um, is it KuCoin? Like the clan? It's not the Q Cucks Clucks clan. Ku. 
This is generally how I would look at it. <clears throat> the KuCoin Klux Klan. KuCoin Klan. <clears throat> KuCoin Klan ain't nothing to fuck with. KuCoin Klan ain't. Is it KuCoin or Ku? Can someone tell me if it's Q, write C U E. And if it's Ku, write K O O or K U, because I'll know what you mean. Uh, this chart looks like crap. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you could, it's an all time low price discovery effectively below this line. Um, this line is sort of even a meme because of this rounding top, but I would say I wouldn't even consider it until it breaks this. Look, I'll even put an alarm on it for you guys. So if ever this line breaks, we will know about it and I can alert you. But I mean, there's nothing to look at. Like if we drill into this, it's going to look bear flaggy ish. Maybe not quite because of this, but I mean, it's just atrocious. Like, to be honest, you have some kind of like weird, like bullhorn kind of vibe. Give me a line. Give me my line. Yay. But like, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. These wicks are bad. Qcoin probably has a cell wall sitting there just poning anyone who tries to dip their toes in the energy web token. Yeah, someone's saying the project has some serious FA though. The price is just a shame. Yeah, that's the same of many projects that I've seen listed on this exchange. And you pay out your ass to be listed on these exchanges. You basically pay them to destroy your token for the honor. For the honor. It's like me giving Mike Tyson a million dollars to punch me in the face. Cool. Let's go on to FET because EWT is the most depressing thing I've seen in a long time. And I don't like being unhappy. I mean, here's another one. Fundamentally amazing. Like Fetch. I had, if you mind, Shake, their CEO also on the podcast. And that dude is so fucking smart. He convinced me that we were living in a simulation. Right. Uh, another thing about Qcoin, just reading comments, is that you have to hold a certain price level for a year or they keep your deposit. So by them selling it down and destroying the price, they also keep your deposit. Right. Sounds like a good business model. Oh, I just, I'm wearing a hero t-shirt. I wish I could trade there, but I can't, but they sent me a shirt. Y'all don't know, but my wife is actually does most of their marketing work. She's secretly low key in crypto too. Um, shh. I would say that fed is in this tiny little kind of range here. I mean, all those that line's valid, but I, I like this one better. Keep losing my mouse on the other screen. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty much it, right? So you had this little bullish SFP broke below there kind of, and that, you know, took price from 249 to 348. That's a big ass move. Big ass move. I know you crypto people don't get literally like you can't get aroused unless something does a three X, but if you ever trade anything below before crypto, if something goes up 20%, it's like, it's like skin max gets you really going. And if you don't know about Skinamax, then you obviously aren't from my generation also. <clears throat> right? Someone just told me I should do stand-up. I'd be a terrible stand-up comedian. And by terrible, I mean fucking amazing. You should do that shit. Okay. There's nothing to see here either, guys. It's some of these charts, it's just so rough. But I would say that these are all the levels you're watching. We do not want to be below 249 with candle closes. Um, then, you know, you're starting to push towards these lows, which is like 177. Let's just add a line there in case. I don't think we're going there, but you got to know it's there. I mean, this is just, this is savage guys. 1500 down to 200. This is the shit that nightmares are made of. So you don't, I mean, listen, if you want to, if you love these projects, Hey, do FET. Have you done FET yet? When will you do FET? Andy, Andy, are you married? 
Do you respond? Or do you have a girlfriend? Andy Jones, are you there? Have you guys ever seen that scene uh, in the movie Swingers? Have you seen the movie Swingers? Or is that, am I aging myself again with John Favreau? And he finally gets this hot girl's number at the bar and he goes home and he's like, his friends tell him not to call her for three days, six days, seven days. And he gets home and he calls the girl. Hey, this is me. I met, met you at the bar. Uh, you know, I, I thought we really kind of hit it off and blah, 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 beep. Gets cut off. So he calls back, keeps leaving messages, gets cut off. And then by the end, he's like having a conversation with himself about how they need to break up like eight, eight calls. And Andy, you're married. So you found a girl that doesn't ma- mind if you ask her questions like four times in a row. Same question. Like you spend it. Have you done fat yet? Do fat. When will you do fat? My God. Andy, you're a lucky man. Very, very. You meant cat? Okay, cool. Look at the chart, Andy. Hey, Fett. Is that what we're looking at? Okay, so anyways, speaking of Fett, Andy, stop leaving messages on that girl's answering machine. Seriously, calling her too many times. Um, I think that uh, you're just ranging between here. So the decision is a close below uh, 249, I would say is a negative sign and a sign that we'll see price appreciation is above 348 and everything else between there is noise and I wouldn't trade it. That's the uh, real consensus there. Too fat. Sounds like some like weird favor. Are we going to do fat now? Hmm. Ask your wife if she's going to do fat. Hey, honey, do fat. Are we going to do fat yet? It's time to do fat. It's like a Star Wars fetish. Boba Fett. Um, I don't know why there's this huge line here, arrow, but it's pointing at what's interesting, actually. Uh, I've talked about this before with golden and death crosses, right? Uh, golden crosses when a, sh- a shorter time frame MA crosses above a longer MA, and a death cross is when it does the opposite to fat. Um, and in this case, it's interesting because the cross was kind of here. It went back above, but when it's touching on price and you see these two MAs and it becomes resistance, that's when the death cross becomes impactful. And you see that you had it right off where it broke below both this huge sell-off. And I wonder why that happened. Oh, because this is a resort company in a global pandemic do pearl, Scott. Do pearl. Pearl it. Come on, guys. Show me your pearls. Pearl necklace is what he's talking about in this case. Fetishes. Um, so now MGM looks kind of good, right? Fully rechased the entire move back to March. I mean, I can't really chart this, but I would say that it looks fine. If you think that, here, here, here's how I look at this chart. If you think COVID's going away, buy it. If you think COVID's coming back, sell it. That's the best I can do. But this is at resistance. Like this is pretty much like the most macro resistance on the chart would be where it was left behind. And why is that? Because supply and demand, right? This area is where any sell order was left behind on the dump. Yeah, a lot of people probably trailed it and sold it down. But anyone who was like, this was my time to sell probably is still like sitting here with their sell orders wondering if they're going to ever get back to Vegas again, because that's what I'm wondering. Um, so maybe like above this area, you would safely buy it. Or if you catch a drop down to the 200 or 50 or something like that. And uh, it's really kind of hard to chart this. You can even go out to the monthly on this. Ooh, monthly is flirting with the death cross again, but um which would just be a reaction to that. It doesn't matter. What you see across all these charts, which is crazy, is this huge drop in volume on the moves up. Now, you would think that that's like a sign that it's you know, a bearish rise, but like that's just because the sheer volume of uh, action in the market around March. You know, like everybody was selling everything. So we haven't really seen increased volume on the rise back, but I mean, most things have gotten back. EXO. Look at all these lines. Holy shit. But yeah, um, I remember this. We had a lot of profitable trades on Nexo. Not me, because I don't trade on Hoodie. Is that how you pronounce it? Hoodie? Is it Huobai? Huobai. 
your favorite crypto exchange. Hero buy. And then just get rid of all this because we know that. Holy ball sacks. RSI is at 85. This eventually is going to probably retrace. Like I wouldn't buy this here. Look at that bearish divergence. <clears throat> Sweet. Let's get rid of RSI completely. Um, Enrico, you are welcome for MGM. I'm sorry I couldn't give you a better chart on it, but you know, when you see something that drops uh, that much and comes right back after a few months, very hard. So uh, this is like a really nice accumulation here. Look at that, like this drop and then it accumulates, accumulates. And this is like, there was a lot of coins we traded like this. I can't remember what month it was like Zill was one of them and some others. And they kind of accumulated for a long time. And once they broke that range, they just went flying, right? I mean, you could call it this if you want either way. But uh, no, I would say here actually is probably the range. See, breaks the range strong, retests an absolute bazooka. That's bazooka with two L's. Um, yeah, is it okay? In China, we say it like horby. Horby? That's something a pimp says. Where am I, horby? That's funny. Where am I, horby? Did you guys get that? God, I should do a stand up. Great. Um, I mean, listen, this is like flipped this technically to support maybe today, yesterday, but like this is cooking, man. I don't know. I would, you never know, but this is parabolic. So it's hard to trade, but I would expect a pullback. And also like, this is higher than it ever really has been on Horby. Isn't that the place that serves roast beef sandwiches? Horby's? It's Arby's. Also, I could do that, right? Oh, I don't know why I used the wrong tool, but uh, look at that. Like you had this break right there, break above the range. That's just a beautiful chart. So listen, I, I mean, I don't know what this thing is going to do. It's fully parabolic. Um, you know, this was a key area right here. Welcome to Horby's. May I take your order? Right here. This whole area really is, I would say, a support, but maybe you could draw it like something like this. You know, it cuts all through this, something like that. See why all this action here. So if you get a pullback to that area, I would definitely like mortgage your kid or something. No, I wouldn't do that ever, but you know, something like back into the 2136, 2066 for sure. Otherwise, like I almost view this as price discovery because none of this counts, right? This first day on the exchange. These dumb candles, they don't count to me. So everything above that black line to me is price discovery. So if it can hold above that, this could go, literally. I'm gonna look at some comments here. I don't care about crypto, just give us jokes. That, that's how I uh, felt through all of 2018. At least I've got my sense of humor, no money. How's the cow? Um, soon to be very dead, my cow. Probably slaughter that in like March. And feed a village of milkers. Uh, V-shape recovery, anyone? Next gen energy, market crash. Let's look at the weekly. Holy hell, guys. I've never looked at this chart, but Jesus Christ, one, two, three, four, five, six weeks to recover back to the level it was at before the dump. That is a savage weekly candle. If that closes like that, I would say we're topping. Shooting star, little gap up. If you see a candle like, I don't even know how to draw it. If you see another candle that closes like lower and is like that or something, even if it's not that big, that would be a perfect evening star pattern, which is when you have a big bullish candle a gap, a shooting star, or any, it can actually, it can just be any doji. Like uh, you could have like a little, just uh, a candle that just looks like a plus sign, right? And then if it gaps down, like after the weekend and drops, that is the toppiest topper of tops you can get. I'll show you one. 
I remember there's a famous one from, that I called in 2018 of an open the Dow Jones. <clears throat> if I can find it, I think it was December 2018 when nobody cared about me on Twitter and I was screaming that the market had topped. I don't remember if it was on the weekly or the daily, but <clears throat> uh, now I can't fucking find it, of course. Oh, wait. Nope, I don't see it. I can't find what I'm looking for. Wanna look like a fucking idiot. Well, there's a couple of them, but I believe this was the one. Yeah, here we go. October, right there. Candle up. Shooting star. Candle down, evening star. Dump to hell. Enjoy your time in Hades. It's lovely this time of year. I would not touch this here, looking at that weekly personally, but the week is far from closed. It's only Wednesday. But also you have, this is like a blow off top, right? Look, that's the highest volume weekly candle you have and it's only Wednesday. I would say that this shit is going down if it closes like that. This volume is going to close like up here. Like, look at, never had anything like that. This is whoever is the big holder in this is selling their faces off right now. Just absolutely selling into every buyer. I would not touch this. This is a blow off top, capitulation volume, potential evening star. I don't know what's going to happen, but I wouldn't touch it here. RFI. Someone said RFI. Is RFI a altcoin? Can someone tell me? Because whatever I opened here is Cohen and Steers Realty Fund. How long did it take me to get good at charting? Oh, really long. I don't know. A while. Being able to chart is basically a useless skill, by the way. Because, and I, I actually said this on Twitter today, something to this effect. I'll turn my hat around and get serious. Can you all see me? Charting is the least important part of trading. Being able to act, like all charting does is give you a, a justifiable reason to take a trade and set a stop loss. That's literally it. The rest of this shit that we all do and indicators and momentum, it's all noise. The only thing that matters is that you can actually set a stop loss and leave it there. That is the singular skill that will make you the most money. Being able to manage your risk, being able to draw pretty lines. There's people out there who work at hedge funds whose sole line, whose sole job is to do analysis and never take a trade because they're shitty at trading and they make millions of dollars just doing the analysis and not actually trading. RFI WETH. Okay, let me see if that's on. Right. So let me look, see if I can find this RFI shit. It might actually be on trading view. Let's see. If I start streaming, my shit goes so slow. Sometimes these are on trading view. <laughs> if you type in Uniswap, put this over here too. All right, I found it on this garbage platform. Ooh, that is a bullish chart. Why don't you guys tell me about this before? Mm. Yo, that is cray cray. Shit's like a 20X. Hell yeah. I love a chart like that. Mm. But you kind of missed it though, right? <laughs> you buy it now. But uh, I would say let's thicken it up how the ladies like it. Mm, I don't know. The bottom doesn't really matter for now. That's your resistance. Coins are just doing these like crazy. Um, Uniswap. I'm sure it's in trading view, but here we are on chart X chart X pro. Du, 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 du. I don't know. There's no way to chart this, right? I mean, it's got no, no price history. I would just say that it's doing some sort of bullish consolidation. You either, well, we can keep that line, I guess, but that or this look at chart X pro for all your chart needs. Du, 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 du. Chart X chart. 
And, you know, you wait for a break above that. But, uh, I mean, if this was your flag, you, they're not even gonna be able to fit what I'm about to draw. Like, it doesn't even matter. Let's start it here, All right? That's your flagpole. And this breaks out. Your target is $4.44, which is only another 2X from here. And that was like a 20X. So that, that makes sense. RFI makes for the RA, the Royal Air Force, RF. <clears throat> RFI. 12 hours later, hit to what a cone bag. What is a cone bag? Anyone? Is that like the bag of stuff you bring to a soccer field and then you lay the cones out in the balls, kick balls around the cones? Sorry, football. Didn't mean to offend my non-Americans who hate it when I say soccer. Oh, okay, so you want to talk about KuCoin? Well, look at this shit. Centivate. I'm, I, I've been working with this company for well over a year. I have tens of millions of these tokens that are, you know, sitting, vesting somewhere. I don't know. I've never sold one because you don't sell them when you're part of a project. But up here, I was probably like a millionaire. And down here, I'm probably like happy to do my own laundry. Oh, well, but I do think this is going to go back up. I, they're very fundamentally strong. And there does come a time when a uh, football, when a uh, Q coin can stop selling and abusing you to death. Right. And Liverpool FC are the team, Scott. All right, mate. Don't call it a cone bag. Uh, I'm going to have to start calling you guys lads. If we're going to talk about football. The beautiful game. I was a huge, like, that's what I played when I was a kid. Soccer, as we called it. Um, and, like, I was the best soccer player in my town when I was, like, 10. And I thought I was amazing, but I live in a small town where soccer is not that popular, I guess. And so then, like, when I was 12, they put me on a traveling team. <clears throat> um, it was called Select. They put me on a Select team to go like play in other cities. And I was like by far the smallest kid on my team. And I was such trash. Like I was the, not, like I was far from even good on my team. We went out there and like dudes that were twice my size just ran me over and humbled me. And I realized that it's sometimes a lot better to be a, a big fish in a small pond than the dead fish in the ocean. That was my experience. Charting ADHD now? No, I'm living ADHD now. So, yeah. Um, so this is how I would view Centivate. Uh, I like to see a break above this and we're at a key resistance actually kind of right here, this whole area. Break above. I think that this is going to rip eventually. Uh, and it's not my bias, honestly. Um, it's not like wishful thinking. It's a great project. Got a good team. And I think that it'll have its... Uh, Day in the sun, bro. Actually, I like that better. Um, this line is stupid. I've been doing this for an hour. Fuck my life. I got kids. You know? I don't need to take care of my kids during the day right now. It's fine. They'll be fine. They don't need me. Um, <clears throat> that was a little bullish divergence there, actually, but so yeah, this is kind of the view. I guess if you were going to zoom out and see if there's something else happening here, you could already say it's already broken out and retested actually, but we'll keep it where it was so that we don't give ourselves a more bullish bias that we had. So listen, if it breaks above this, I could say that we're starting to trend. I like it anywhere above this black line. I could actually see buying this here, buying more here, taking this as a target, which would you know be uh, you know, 70, 80% and looking at higher targets above. But I can tell you, I don't know if I'm supposed to, but this is Qcoin. Just selling like mad. You give them your tokens, you give them your trust, and they deeply penetrate you from behind. And then they continue to do so. But hey, Qcoin, man. And that, you know, it's better off. It'll come back. So that's my view on s and
trying to keep up football nobody's asked me to show me their fibs yet scott five minute on gs lsi for a quick spit out your coffee and your name is limp i love that polls is moving yes polka starters i shared that earlier it went bananas uh, that's probably to me one of the projects i'm most fundamentally uh bullish on another one that i was in the pre-sale and absolutely crushing i got bags bro sxp the worst coin in america and it's not even in america i mean this was probably the most of this year of all coins that were like so hyped it was binance binance has a credit card and you can do credit with your card and the binance and the, and the, and the financing and look at that i mean i think i bought this up here stopped out somewhere down here bought it somewhere around here stopped out somewhere down here i took some garbage trades on this that's all i can say and it hurts my feelings did you miss polls no i didn't talk about it but it's on my twitter <clears throat> so look at my twitter hmm, because that's another one that it, i mean sxp just looks like shit right but this is all like massive bullish divergence, right? We have this RSI low and it's just making it higher and all this, but like good luck if I could timing that. This was the low, right? So technically anything below here is hot garbage. Uh, and I'm not talking about like you warmed up your garbage in a microwave. I'm talking about like you went to the entire garbage dump for your whole town and doused it in gasoline and lit it on fire. Like super hot garbage. Nuclear waste in a trash can garbage. You can't trade this unless you just love catching falling knives. I mean, it's even making lower lows now, right? I mean, you could have been like, oh, sweet guys, it's, it's consolidating for its next leg up. It's going to do legs up. And then you make lower lows than all of this. You can draw this anywhere, but like hot trash bros. Sorry about your bags. They're heavy. But I'm a very, honestly, I gotta be, I gotta be honest, very passionate as a community member about SXP in it for the tech. That's sarcasm. I'm not a community member. I sold this trash and lost money on it two times. Oh, that makes me think of something. So I told you guys before that I have a show coming out, a new show called Trade Gods. It's taken me weeks to get it done because we're like properly editing it and trying to do it for real. And I'm spending all kinds of money for no reason. But the first episode is Peter Brandt. It's coming out in the next couple of days. And he talks about this. Um, and the, the, the purpose of the show is literally just to like figure, talk to legendary traders uh, some that are not as legendary, but talk to traders, figure out exactly what their edge is, how they think and how they operate, right? To dig into that. And Peter said he will only, he said he, his rule is that he will bleed on a hill two times, basically. He'll take two trades on an asset if he loses twice, that shit is dead to him. He's not trading it anymore, right? And so I, that's not my rule necessarily, but I took two solid losses on, S, on SPX. I did it publicly with you guys. Maybe some of you lost money with me. Did you? It's cool. I'm almost done with that coffee. It's like 84 ounces. I piss my, oh man. But yeah, I should get going. Um, so SPX looks, uh, SXP looks like shit. That's the bottom line, right? You might get a little, another bullish divergence here. And if it closes above this line, it would have a nice little wick. Like, so you got four hours. I would be watching that for four hours. I could see it, but like, why catch this knife? There are much duller knives to catch than this hot flaming nuclear dump of trash. UTK, I love, I love this coin. Love it. I uh, had their CEO, Sonia Khan, who is amazing on the podcast uh, this week that just came out yesterday. You guys asked me to look at UTK. It's awesome. So this is sitting like, I don't even know about that. That's dumb. I hate this. So dumb. Makes charting like so hard. We've talked about this before. Listen, this is at support, like below 583. This could retrace further, honestly. 
Yeah, maybe down here ish. But fundamentally, this project is incredible. They're, you know, they really are solving payments for crypto around the world. They have like, it's like every day you, you see their Twitter and it's like 10,000 more vendors are accepting crypto with your trust. And it's crazy. Like they're really actually doing stuff. So this coin will go up eventually. It's also on Horby. How your Horby? She good. Um, my wife married me for my sharp wit, in case you're wondering. She just texted me, actually. She's not watching this, luckily. She's texting me about property taxes. I saw it come up on my screen. You no, know, this is kind of a big ass channel, something like that. But these wicks are just so dumb. Let's go into the four hour where we can avoid the wick, 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 whack. What was that? black line from I don't know what that black line is but it don't look good <clears throat> that's a stupid line it's literally from nothing yeah we just open a chart and there's like lines there You're like fuck it's my shit <clears throat> let's check rs isle and see if there is a bull dizzle oh for shizzle there is a yeah people are always like you're not like you know, it's not like I'm like the most handsome dude ever. There's girls who have thought that I was like a good looking. How'd you get your wife? I was funny as shit. Keep her entertained. It's also good at DJing, which is what started it. It didn't hurt. But yeah, we got some significant bullish divergence happening here. So maybe this will go up. That'd be awesome. It's also like if you're drilled in this far. <clears throat> yeah. So this, uh, and that is a reversal candle followed by a bullish move. I think UTK looks pretty good here. That's what I must say. Right? UTK all day. This is a key area. Right here. My wife thinks I'm handsome, though. It's true. You can ask her. She always did. She said I was handsome. My mom thinks I'm handsome, too. I expect that that area would be a lot of resistance. Something like that. And then up here, she married me because I'm good at charts. She's like, oh, the way you draw those lines. So sexy. So yeah, I think UTK looks pretty good. Babes love DJs. That is true. That is true. And I did meet my wife while I was DJing, but I met her that day and then I, we didn't talk for six months and then we reconnected on the Facebook. So we have more Facebook than DJing to, to credit. But she did tell me I was the best DJ she'd ever heard in her life the night we met. It's true. And I was. Not trying to be like bragging or anything, but I was really, really good at DJing. <laughs> Value USDT. Actually, these guys uh, reached out to me. They, when you get a bunch of Twitter followers, every single project in crypto reaches out to you. <clears throat> like, hey, do you mind looking at our stuff and see what's up? And so I do. That's how I find almost every coin. Like, or I send it off to my assistant and say, please look at this or ask around or whatever. Who is the best DJ? Me. I'm the best DJ. Do we just discuss this? I'm the best. My favorite DJ in the world is DJ Jazzy Jeff. Uh, I used to have his record back there that was displayed, but that's the beat nuts there right now. Watch out now. That's a single. Who knows that song? It's one of the hottest beats ever. Beat nuts. Watch out now. Okay, so value is doing some things here. Let me go into the four hour. Get rid of RSI. This is bullish consolidation. It's a little bit of an ascending triangle, but descending triangle, right? Kinda, something like that. 
And I had this conversation on Twitter and then I had my, the classic farm animal contingent that trolls me no matter what I write on Twitter. That guy doesn't trade. He's never traded, taken a trade in his life. He's broke. He's a LARP. Imagine the people think I'm LARPing when it's actually my face and name and are behind avatars telling me that I'm LARPing. That's a good time. That makes sense, right? think they're projecting but okay so look I, i'm not saying this is a descending triangle what do i think of cdjs versus vinyl i think cdjs are trash do you see any behind me no um so 50 if you go to the pattern site which is bukowski like if you're looking for any stats on patterns the likelihood that they play out that's where you want to be it's the only place you can find it still it's not like exact science but it gives you an idea and so descending triangles, which is what this pattern would be if you looked at it like this. I think that this looks bullish. It doesn't matter. But a descending triangle breaks up 52% of the time. And when it is in an uptrend like this, everyone screams about how bearish this is, it breaks up 63% of the time. It's pretty good odds. Actually, it's just a really trash pattern. 63% is hard to play on those statistics. But a descending triangle at the end of the day is more like a continuation pattern. If it's at the bottom, it generally continues down. If it's at the top, it generally continues up. So it's not something that I would worry about, right? Kind of a coin flip, but definitely not bearish like uh, people say, right? Show me your fibs. Beautiful fibs. I'll show you some fibs. We could pull some fibs on this. I haven't even pulled fibs today. Like I'm such a spaz. Like you'll notice that every week it's like, I just look at everything in a different way. Right. Oh God. Show me your fibs though. This chart has beautiful, big voluptuous fibs. So 50% is not a fib. Right. But we call it the Dow level because traders in legacy markets and stock market love 50% retracements. It happens all the time. We talk about it here all the time. And look at where this bottomed twice. Right at that fitty. Oh, fitty. Um, 50 cent, 50% 50 retracement. So much coffee. Oh, nice fibs. Man, you're so lucky that you found one with fibs like that. Just the best fibs. I mean, this just looks like ready to rage, right? Unless it forms like some kind of weird head and shoulders or something. This is just bullish consolidation after a move up. Let's look at some macro levels. So you want to be above this though. Yeah, $3.90. That's a pretty, like if you want to pull that here. On the bearish side, that is a definite bearish SFP. You got to be above this before you're interested again, or else I would start looking for it, you know, down here. In which case, like, let's go. Is there those lines there in the four hour? No, you're an idiot. So once again, guys, go on a line, click your settings wheel, go to visitability, and you can make it appear and disappear on different time frames. Right, right. Now it'll magically be there in the four hour. You see how that works? Tight, right? Don't say that I never taught you anything about your fibs. So I would look at that level and then you would probably have like, you know, depending, you could have more of a like bull flag. Even, you know, this would be your, this whole area around the 61.8. So I would not buy this yet. As good as it looks here, I would wait till it's above that. Or, you know, even below that level, to be honest. And I would, I would look for that golden pocket retrace, like 61 to 65-ish, and look for something like this, you know, and comes out. Well, I don't even love that. Maybe it'll go up a little and form something and trickle down here. But regardless, the safest bet on this is trading it above $3.88, cents. Charts are so stupid. Why do we have like fractions of cents on our dollar charts? You ever tried to make a fraction out of a penny? Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Zill, 
Scott, if you have time, see Bell. I don't know what that is. I, I'm not going to have time, guys. Will you chart audio? I'm not going to chart anything that's not there. So once again, your major life hack is that's you can see exactly what I'm charting in the description and here. I'm going to tweet that we're still going. No, I'm not. Fuck that. We're going to be done soon. See? ADD. I was like, hey, let me go check Twitter. I'm fucking live. What's wrong with you? Oh, yeah. So I was talking about this earlier. Lost my mouse again. Disconnected. Come on. Come back. I have two mice, by the way, because I have my laptop to my left, which is controlling this. This is what I was talking about. Remember, the, it's like crazy accumulation in a range, and then you see it break above. If you were here with me, you bought this. This was like a trade that I was screaming about in the newsletter at 95 sats. And we traded it all the way up to like 287. Didn't catch the very end of it and had more entries at these lines every time. So that was a Chadwick McChatterstein trade bomb. Mouse still dead. I'm presently, I'm presently charting left-handed. If you didn't know that I was amphibious, I'm not really ambidextrous or amphibious. I mean, this jumps out at me, right? Up, perfect touches down, lots of action at the EQ. It always happens. Draw channels, just draw channels. Oh, my mouse is back. So, just draw channels and look at that EQ. Look at all that resistance. Look at all that support. Look at the support, exactly where this launched from. And now we're outside. Still looks good to me here, be honest. These lines, I'm just going to get rid of them. That one I kind of like still. That one I definitely like. That one I still like. Cool. So like if you can catch this down here, like 151 on a dip, something like that. But this could reverse right here. This candle has the makings of reversal and head up. So I would be targeting 204 right now. If you break that, I'd be targeting this area, 243, above that, 287. Should I show you my fibs on this one? No, there's too many lines on this. If you do it on the weekly, maybe the lines won't be there. They're still there. FML, bro. And you can see that they had that as well. That is not a fib. That was the name your price tool. Jesus Christ, guys. I'm opening like Dan fans and out of here. Show me your pitchfork. That was not a Gan fan, by the way. It was a pitchfork. Which is sometimes I feel like that's what crypto Twitter has when they're standing outside my door. Pitchforks and torches ready to burn me down because they don't like me. This is kind of a golden pocket retrace, right? 61.8. This probably went to like 75, but that's a really firm retrace before that move up. I think Zill looks pretty good, dudes, dudettes. I assume that there are some girls here that I haven't scared off, but that would be my look at Zill. Zlot. Zlot. Zlot, Zlot, is that what it is? Zlot sounds like a discount store. Hmm, come buy your dollar underwear, Zlots, on sale today. I uh, can't really chart this. There's no price history. It's nothing but stupid wicks. Zlot. Show me your Zlot. No, there's nothing to chart here, guys. This is impossible. Even if I went to like the 15 minute, it's just a lot of wicks and gaps and stupidity. Hey, let's look at the weekly charts, guys. Uh, what can we glean from this? Nothing. I've got no information on that. Um, now I've basically charted everything. So I'm a pull. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm gonna look at the comments over here and. Uh, Stop sharing my screen, then I can do it. Pull the chat up here. Um, I gotta take a wicked piss in a few minutes and I have to pick up my child, but I'm gonna look at what you guys have to say here. And if you have any quick questions, let me know. 
uh, do us a favor and don't bogart the fibs. Checking it out. Oh, you guys got to do the thumbs up thing, apparently. I'm supposed to tell you, mm, I read a thing about being a YouTuber and I have to tell you to smash the like button and smash the subscribe. What do you think of the NFT space? I love it. I love it. There's a, I, I love Block Party. That's where I did my own NFTs. I did a couple, Ball and Oats. And Terra Virtua is coming out. They're awesome. Have I heard of UFT? Uh, not since the 80s. Um, although I did hear that aliens are real. That's UFO, not UFTs. Idiot. Uh, thanks for the value charting. You're welcome. Chart audio. Nope, not charting anything that wasn't in here. Uh, what is the website? It is the the pattern site, I believe, dot com. The pattern site. Um, and yeah, I think we're coming to an end here. Um, once again, join the newsletter because then you can get your chart requests in and you don't have to spam the chat. Hey, bro, fat. Fat? Did you fat yet? Are you going to do fat? Have you looked at fat? Mm. Um, and sign up to Femex. And also, do I have any idea about Digibyte? I haven't looked at it in ages, but uh, I will try to take a look later off, off camera. Um, I really enjoy doing these live streams. It's fun. Um, get to interact with, with people. And I look at charts, you know, a lot of the day anyways, just to see what's happening out there. And it's a good excuse for me to look at these charts that you guys want looked at that I would have maybe not uh, taken a look at myself. Um, I can ask you to tell your friends that I'm hilarious and really good at drawing lines and pictures and they should come watch. But I'm going to be honest. I am terrible at drawing pictures. I can't even draw um, stick figures. Uh, literally, I'm. I'm. It looked like it looks like I have like an actual like physical problem when I try to draw things. It's it's really embarrassing. My daughter draws better than me, and she's five, and she's terrible at drawing. Really bad. So, anyways, guys, um, thank you very much. Really, it's very flattering that you uh, spend come and even bother to watch this and spend the time. And, um, oh, one more thing. Tomorrow at 1.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm doing a live stream with Simon Dixon, who's an absolute legend. I had him on the uh, podcast, and he has a new thing called Retirement Plan B, which is basically a fully structured like course and videos on how to plan for your retirement with Bitcoin as the focus, like legally how to do it, uh, financially how to do it, literally like every step you need to know to properly structure a retirement. And he asked me if I would, you know, have him on a live stream to talk about it. And I said, absolutely. I think people would love that and be really, and he's just a genius legend anyway. So I plan to ask him a lot of questions and uh, for you guys to be able to ask him a lot of questions too. And if we're nice, maybe he will show us his fibs. Peace.